previously on the Make Me Lab. I wanted an easily portable classroom system which included all of the knowledge and content of Western classrooms, but remained fully self-powered and easily deployed anywhere in the world regardless of infrastructure. It incorporates computer systems loaded with software, tutorials, textbooks, and reference material allowing any subject to be presented to an audience. This was a KU band system and we're now moving to an L band system which is going to fit everything inside of this little case. The satellite we're receiving from is going to be the Inmarsat 4i3 satellite over North America for me here. So in an upcoming video I will put this together. I should have the antenna and all the other components arriving in two days or so. Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to assemble my new OuterNet satellite receiver system. Guts of this system will be the Raspberry Pi 3. I've gone ahead and I downloaded the image from the OuterNet website and burned it to the SD card already. This should be all set up with a minimum of setup required once we get it fired up. I ordered the antenna and receiving system as well as some stuff I'm not sure whether we'll use. I've got some USB extenders, short distance extenders, that'll make sense in a little bit. Some small uh, coax jumper, a really short extension as well as just in case I got myself a long length of SMA, uh, this is RG58, should do the job. Uh, in case we want to extend the antenna out for uh, by itself. There's some other options there too. Let's get it put together. So this was what I was waiting for. This arrived from OuterNet in Chicago today. It was a little delayed in transit. We've got the USB software defined radio with an SMA output. Uh, really nice aluminum case on this. You can actually use any SDR uh, I think the E4000 chipsets work the best, but I got theirs just because the price was very reasonable. A low noise amplifier to boost our signal, as well as the patch antenna, the L-band patch antenna. Uh, I think we should be in good shape. This is going to be really basic assembly. Let's uh, throw it together. I think we'll use uh, a simple little buck converter and just throw this on a, a three cell LiPo for today just so I can move it around and not have to be near a wall outlet for testing. And of course this will be on battery later. I think what we'll do here is we'll put this in between our LNA and our dongle and our USB and that should allow us a little bit more flexibility, I do believe. Now, let's just make sure. This is the output going to the radio, and perfect, I got the right adapter. We are in good shape. This end, we'll go to our patch antenna. We'll wait to hook that up in a minute. And then for the Raspberry Pi, this is why I got this. I got these USBs because this is going to stick out and be quite long. I think we will use just one of these and then hook up our SDR, our software defined radio, to that and give us a little bit more flexibility to keep things kind of a little more neat and tidy. This, we're not going to final assemble this, this is just for testing for today, so let's get it fired up. Word of warning, uh, the LNA, the low noise amplifier here, is completely exposed, so we got to be a little careful with that. I think we will maybe just, maybe just wrap that in some tape for now, or maybe make a bulkhead. We'll see. Just something to keep this from shorting out on all this equipment while we mess around and get this sorted out. Here's a 3300 LiPo that I use for flying my uh, flight test Versa wing, as well as my Hobby King Zephyr. I think we'll use that for our power source for right now. Uh, don't recommend running LiPos on Raspberry Pis because you can run it low and damage uh, your LiPo, but in this case for testing, it'll work fine. And plug it into our LiPo. That should fire up the Pi, and it does. We're in good shape. So we'll go ahead and we'll kind of pile everything of that in there. 
but let's be a little more careful. The LNA did light up. That's good news. Let's be a lot more careful with this so we don't short this out. I'm going to put a bulkhead in here and then I'm going to set this uh, just outside the case and I'm going to go ahead and get switch over to the PC. Um, I'll set this up. This is minor and uh, let's go see if we can get a signal out of it. Uh, nothing to it now. Alrighty, so what I've done is I've gone ahead and put the receiver and Pi system in the Pelican case outside, just set it on the deck, and tested it out. And sure enough, right out of the box, it, w it worked. It was able to make its own Wi-Fi hotspot that I'm logged into here with my browser on the PC. Uh, I was able to aim it with just using my cell phone and get a, a pretty good uh, signal -to noise ratio out of it most of the time. So this is the interface and we'll take a look. This is a couple of days later now mind you. I've allowed it to download some of the data. We've got uh, 8.31% of the onboard memory used that's allocated, but we're cruising along at about 5.75 dB of signal to noise ratio. In my testing, I found that anything above 3 is rock solid, no errors. So we're getting files, no problem. Uh, the outer net interface is really, really simple. Go to browse. And all the files that it has downloaded are here. So uh, lots of news stuff, um, Voice of America news here, pretty cool stuff. Uh, really basic, just navigate around and get the information you're after. Lots of different news sources. So this is the Outernet team putting these on as well as we can submit our own content. I can't believe how well this is working for the L band. I'm really, really happy. And the really cool thing, if we go to the weather tab here, this pulls up all the weather data that it's downloaded and renders it on demand. And the Pi does a really good job of this. I'm really impressed. And we can select what we want. Right now we're on air surface and we're looking at the wind. Uh, pretty handy to know which direction and strength the winds are coming from. And let's see if we can make that go away. We can zoom right in on kind of the area that I'm interested in. Here's where I'm located right now. And sure enough, rendered on demand is our airflow currents. And we can go ahead and change those to uh, temperature. And it should. Blam, there we go. There we get our temperature ranges. Very, very cool in what direction everything's moving. Little cell going on here. Uh, I'm really happy. Overall, project, huge success. This is going to be a great addition to the uh, Educase product, project. Uh, you wanted to look at Middle East news. Good news and information wherever you are in the world, as well as if you're into amateur radio stuff, AMSAT. Here's the ARIS, which is the International Space Station. Here's all the information, call for proposals, all what they've got going on, their websites, everything. Uh, really cool stuff. I'm pretty impressed. So that, in a nutshell, is our L-band outer net receiver with a Raspberry Pi 3 working, downloading data all the time now. I'm just going to leave it set up for a while and let it keep receiving, but uh, I'm going to see. I think I might submit some files myself and we'll see whether Syed, Saeed and the team will uh, accept them and uh, send them down from the Outernet uh, satellite downlinks around the world. Pretty cool stuff. Build one of these yourself, super easy. Under a hundred bucks you can buy the equipment right from Outernet. You just need a Raspberry Pi 3 and an SD card and you're in business. So I uh, will go ahead and the next uh, update on this project will be we'll, we'll put this into a little better uh, case for the, the Educase project so we can tote it around instead of that great big monster folding satellite dish we were using on the KU band. Cheers guys, good luck in all your projects. See you next week.